Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will see the structure theorem of uh, finite abelian groups. In the next few lectures, we will try to prove uh, this important theorem. So, let me first uh, state the, uh, the structure theorem of finite abelian groups. So, in a plain language, uh, what it says, if you start with a finite abelian group uh, G, then it must be product of uh, cyclic groups, that is what it says. And there is some uh, uniqueness also involved in the statement. So, let me explain uh, first of all uh, how one can actually write down. So, there are various versions of uh, this structure theorem. So, let me state uh, two versions and then we will actually try to prove both these versions are equivalent. Okay? So, I will actually motivate by examples uh, why these two versions uh, are expected to be equivalent. Okay, let us start with uh, the first version. So, here is the, the structure theorem. So, this is I am going to call it uh, first version. So, many books actually state it in the different ways, okay, but we are going to see that all those versions are all equivalent. So, you start with the finite abelian group, okay. let uh, G be a finite abelian group. So, then the structure theorem actually asserts that this G can be expressed as a direct sum or direct product of a cyclic subgroups okay, or cyclic groups. So, then G can be expressed as a direct product so, when you deal with uh, abelian groups, you call them as direct sum as well okay? or direct sum of cyclic groups. Again, now we will put a condition on what kind of cyclic groups. So, in the first version, we allow cyclic groups of prime power orders okay? of prime power orders. So, what is the meaning of that? So, they are cyclic groups of order p power alpha for some prime p. Okay? So, very explicitly G is isomorphic to Z modulo some p 1 power e 1 Z. Okay? Any cyclic group of order n, we know that it is isomorphic to Z modulo n Z. So, if you take a cyclic group that has some prime power order that will look like Z power P power alpha Z. Okay? So, this is one group then direct product direct product Z modulo some P, P k power E k Z. Okay? But note that uh, here we do not assume this P i's are all necessarily distinct. Okay? So, some repetition is allowed. So, P 1 where P 1 etcetera P k or some prime numbers okay. and we assume that okay, they are not necessarily distinct, they are not necessarily distinct. Okay. So, moreover, so whatever uh, the decomposition that you are getting for this G okay, in terms of this prime powers okay, up to rearrangement, okay, you, can, you are allowed to actually shuffle them. So, you are allowed to permute them, but up to the permutation these exponents and the prime powers they are all actually uniquely determined by G. Okay. So, moreover this is also part of the statement. Moreover, Okay, let me write it in blue. Moreover, these powers, the powers P1 power E1, etc., PK power EK, so they are uniquely determined by uniquely determined by capital G. Okay, so, what does it mean? In case G is isomorphic to some Z 
మాడులో క్యూ వన్ పవర్ సమ్ ఈ వన్ డాష్ అండ్ సో వన్ ఇజట్ మాడులో సమ్ క్యూ కే డాష్ ఈ డాష్ కే డాష్ ఇజట్ దెన్ దిస్ నంబర్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ప్రైమ్స్ దట్ అప్పియర్ దట్ విల్ బి సేమ్ అండ్ ఆన్ టాప్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ సో దీస్ నవ్ ప్రైమ్స్ అప్ టు పెర్మెంటేషన్ దే మస్ట్ బి సేమ్ అండ్ ద రెస్పెక్టివ్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ ఆల్సో మస్ట్ బి సేమ్ okay so let's elaborate what is the meaning of uniqueness okay this is the statement so this is the first version of the structure theorem of finite abelian group if you start with a finite abelian group then that can be expressed as a direct product of cyclic groups of prime power orders and uh, the that expression involving some prime powers those prime powers are uniquely determined by g that's what the theorem says so now let's elaborate what is this uniqueness means again we will actually prove uh, the uniqueness so uh, so what does it mean suppose g is isomorphic to some other tuple like let's say q1 some let's call it something l1 ez cross etc cross ez some q k dash l k dash ez okay again assume that this q1 etc qk dash they are all primes okay so if this is what happens then you already have this star okay they call this is star then from star and double star what you can say you can say that this up to permutation okay so there exists sigma okay first of all k must be equal to k dash so that means the number of factors that are there in this uh, star so that is first of all unique uniquely determined by capital g so k equal to k dash and then there exist a permutation sigma in sk such that this q i power this li will be same as p sigma i power e sigma phi for all from 1 to k so that means just by up to permutation this prime powers are all equal so that's what it says so g determines uniquely all this prime powers so this is the first statement first version of uh, our uh, structure theorem of finite abelian groups okay so let me actually state the second version but before stating the second version let me actually uh, do some examples then it will be clear so what is the meaning of uh, uh, the second version why second version is naturally motivated from the first version so before that let's actually recall this fact so the this fact something uh, we proved uh, some time back so this is actually implicitly uses this chinese remainder theorem so if you take ez modulo mn times ez okay so then that will be isomorphic to ez modulo mz cross ez modulo nz if the gcd of this m and n are one okay so whenever you have two relatively primes then if you consider the cyclic groups ez modulo m cross ez modulo ez modulo m and ez modulo n and if you take the direct product of them that will be isomorphic to again a cyclic group of order mn that's what this statement says so in particularly what you can do by induction if you write this given capital n as some p1 power alpha 1 etc some pr power alpha r so then it's clear that this cyclic group ez modulo nz is naturally isomorphic to ez modulo p1 power alpha 1 ez cross etc cross ez modulo pr power alpha r ez okay so indeed cyclic product of cyclic groups can be cyclic when that can happen it can happen if the orders of the respective cyclic groups are relatively prime okay that is what you can prove from this uh, basic facts so this is the fact one this is the fact two so i will leave it to you to check both of them okay so check the second is 
coming from 1 ok. This is by induction you can actually prove. So, now uh, using this uh, and the first version of the structure theorem you can play around and then and then you can come up with the second version ok. So, let us do one example and then uh, we will state the second version. So, now what we are going to do let us take this uh, n to be 162 ok this natural number 162. So, we are going to look at the group abelian group of order 162 ok. So, then what is the factorization of this? This is you can see that this is 2 times 3 power 4 ok. 3 square is 9, 9 into 9 is 81, 81 into 2 is 162 that is your number n. So, now uh, for example, uh, there are many uh, interesting uh, finite abelian groups that has this order. So, one such group you can take it to be ok as a first example the cyclic group of order 162 itself ok. If you take uh, Z modulo 162 Z then you can see that that is uh, one uh, uh, that is an abelian group of order 162. But since uh, we have this factorization 2 into 3 power 4 is nothing but 162. So, you can see that this group is naturally isomorphic to Z modulo 2 Z direct product Z modulo 3 power Z ok. So, 3 power is 81. So, 3 power 4 is uh, 81. So, you can see that uh, the product of these two cyclic groups is nothing but again a cyclic group ok. So, now uh, interestingly uh, this 2 and 3 power 4 combined because 2 and 3 power 4 they are GCD is 1. So, this 2 and this 3 power 4 can be combined and then you can get this 162. So, that is what this says. So, let us look at another example ok then in of the same order 162. So, for example, one can take uh, first to the cyclic group Z modulo 2 Z direct product with Z modulo 3 square Z and then Z modulo 3 square Z ok. So, look at it uh, this is indeed uh, in the form of the first version ok. The first version says G can be expressed as a direct product of cyclic groups of prime power orders ok. So, but repetition is allowed. So, you can see that this is such example Z modulo 2 Z and then uh, 3 square 3 square that is what that is a tuple that you are having. So, now uh, what one can do? So, now you can group them together and then make something interesting. For example, if you take this 2 and then this 3 square both of them are relatively prime. So, so we are allowed to combine them ok. So, then this becomes naturally isomorphic to Z modulo 2 into 3 square. So, that is 18 18 Z cross Z modulo 9 Z. So, now you have grouped so that what happens you have written it in some order, but this order says that 9 divides 18 ok. So, once you have written it in this particular order then you can see that this 9 and 8. So, this 18 and 9. So, this tuple is actually uniquely determined by this group G ok. This is the group G. So, there is no other way to actually write this tuple ok. So, this uh, 18 and 9 somewhat uniquely determined once you write it in this form. So, this is the somewhat this is what somewhat gives you your second version of the structure theorem of finite abelian groups. Okay, let us do one more example and then I will state the second version. So, let us consider <coughs> now Z modulo 2 Z cross Z modulo 3 Z and then cross Z modulo 3 Z and then Z modulo 3 square Z. Again note that this is uh, uh, of the first version of the form that is there in the first version all the cyclic groups corresponds to prime powers and then uh, this is uh, again 
of order 162 ok. So, now if you take this uh, then what you are getting you can see that uh, indeed uh, you will be able to actually if you want to write it in this form ok. So, where 18 is bigger and the 9 is smaller but 9 divides 18. So, that is the condition we wanted ok. So, here also that is how it is written it is because there is only one component 162. So, we do not have two, two different components, but here in the example 2 you have two different components in the second version. But now uh, if you take this particular example you can see that to get such version you have to take this highest power of this 3 and then combine with 2 because 2 and 3 are relatively prime. So, in particularly 2 and 3 square are relatively prime. So, you are able to actually combine these two. So, then if you combine them what do you get? You get exactly z modulo 18 z as before and then cross z modulo 3 z cross z modulo 3 z. So, basically you have written it as now this corresponds to 3 tuples 18 3 and 3 but 3 divides 3 and then 3 divides 18. So, you have written it in this form. So, you note that these two are not you cannot combine them together and similarly these two cannot be combined together because 18 and 3 they are not relatively prime. So, this is the max you can do. So, once you combine them this way then you can see that these tuples that what you are getting is uniquely determined by the group G. So, now using the first version it is not hard to see how many possible non-isomorphic groups that you get of order 162 because the first version says any given this finite abelian group is can be expressed as a direct product of cyclic groups of prime power orders. So, that is of this form this star ok. So, this P1, E1 etc, P, K, E, K they are all uniquely determined by this G. Okay. So, because of that if you think about it once you know this factorization that is 162 is nothing but twice 3 power 4. So, all matters is what is there in the exponent of these primes. Okay. So, now splitting them actually kind of determines somewhat unique uh, finite groups of order 162. So, what I want to say in case if you take this group that has order 162. So, then you can see that uh, <coughs> if you write this G as direct product of prime powers E z P 1 power E 1 E z cross etcetera cross E z P k E k power E z. So, if you write G equal to this z modulo p 1 e 1 z cross etcetera z modulo p k e k z. So, then uh, if you think about it the cardinality of g is going to be this p 1 e 1 times etcetera p k e k. Now, since the repetition is allowed you can actually combine equal primes and then you can take the corresponding exponent. So, that it indeed says this p i it has to be either 2 or 3 because 162 is uh, having only these 2 prime devices. And if you if p i equal to 2 then it forces e i to be 1 ok. And similarly if p j is 3 then e j has to be now either 1, 2, 3 or 4. But whatever it is, so for some indices uh, this p j can be 3 because repetitions allowed. So, if you take the corresponding indices let us say for e i 1 etcetera e some i r all of them are 3 then if you sum the corresponding exponents that has to be 4. So, basically that corresponds to partition of 4 ok. And since this p 1 power e 1 etcetera p k power e k they are all uniquely determined by capital G ok. So, if you are interested in counting number of non-isomorphic finite abelian group of order 162 then that must be exactly equal to the partition of 1 times partition of 4. So, the number of 
abelian groups of order 162 should be the product partition of 1 times partition of 4. So, let us denote P of R by the number of partitions of R. So, what is the meaning of partitions of R? It is a tuple of sequence of numbers, let us call it uh, lambda 1 etcetera some lambda a which is which are in the decreasing order such a way that this lambda 1 plus etcetera lambda a must be exactly r. So, the tuple lambda 1 etcetera lambda a is called partition of r if it satisfies these two properties. Okay. So, let us do one example, let us compute what is partition of 4. So, if you take 4, you want to write it as sum of some smaller numbers, then you can see that. Uh, so, this 4 can be written as 4 and then it can be written as 3 plus 1 and then it can be written as 2 plus 2 and then 2 plus 1 plus 1 and then 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So, there are 5 ways you can write 4 as sum of smaller numbers. So, that means, so in, in this specific manner where the, so sum of smaller number which are in the decreasing order. Okay. So, then partition of 4 is nothing but 5, that is what we are getting. Okay. So, both these conditions should be satisfied. So, with that condition you can see that partition of 4 is 5. So, now how many abelian groups of order 162 is there? Partition of 1 is just 1. So, it is 1 into actually 5. So, there are 5 abelian groups of order 162, non-isomorphic abelian groups, okay. non-isomorphic abelian groups of order 162 is exactly equal to 5. So, what are they? We listed already 3 of them. So, you can see that this one corresponds to, so this one corresponds to the partition again empty partition that is 1 and then this another partition 4. So, this is trivial, these two are trivial partitions. So, now if you take this one, you can see that this corresponds to again empty partition 1, okay, let me put this colon here to separate them then you have this 2, 2. Okay. So, what is about this? So, this corresponds to again 1 colon, so 1, 1, 2. So, that is what this is. Okay. 1, 1, 2, you write it as 2, 1, 1. Okay. So, now what are, what is about other things? So, let us write all of them. So, 1, 4, so this is the first one and then 1, 3, 1, so that is the second one, again 1, 2, 2, that is the third one and then 1, 2, 1, 1, the fourth one, sorry, 2, 1. Then 1, 1, 1. So, this is the fifth one. So, let us see what will be the corresponding group. This will be just a jet modulo 162 a jet. And what is about this? So, this if you write it in the prime power form, it is a jet modulo 2 a jet cross a jet modulo 3 power 4 a jet. So, let us write it in the prime power form. So, this is a jet modulo 2 a jet cross a jet modulo 3 power 3 a jet cross z modulo 3z. What is about this? This is z modulo 2z cross z modulo 3 square z, z modulo 3 square z. So, what is about this? This is z modulo 2z cross z modulo 3 square z cross z modulo 3z cross z modulo 3z. What is about the next one? This is z modulo 2z cross z modulo 3z. 
So now there are four copies of them. So you raise eight power four. So that's it. Okay, these are all all non-isomorphic order one sixty two abelian abelian groups. Okay, so now as we observed, uh, we can rewrite given finite abelian group as a product of cyclic groups satisfying some very specific property. So, what is it? So, let us see in this example what are they. So, in the first example it is going to be just 162. In the second example you can combine these two and then get something like this. We jet modulo. So, 3 cube is 27, 27 into 2 it is 52 we jet. Okay, 27 into 2, sorry, 54. The third thing again you can combine these two. So, then what you get? You get EZ modulo 18 EZ cross EZ modulo 3 square EZ. The fourth thing again you can combine these two. So, this is going to be isomorphy to EZ modulo 18 EZ cross EZ modulo 3 EZ square. And the fourth one is going to be again you can combine one of them z modulo 6 z cross z modulo 3 z power 3. So, note that you have written them all of them as product of cyclic groups, but in the very specific order. So, it is in the decreasing order and the, the, the number of elements in each component actually has some very specific. So, the last component number divides the previous component number okay, and so on. So, indeed, so we are ready to now state this second version of the structure theorem. So, here is the second version. So, what it says again as before let G be a finite abelian group. So, then you can prove that G is isomorphic to some EZ modulo A1 EZ cross etc cross EZ modulo some AM EZ okay, with the property that where A1 is divided by A2. So, AM divides AM minus 1, AM minus 1 divides AM minus 2 and so on A2 divides A1. Okay. So, with, with this condition you have this AIs and moreover, so if you call this is star okay, again with this property. So, so, this is you call it double star and with this property, so this property is very important. So, then moreover is A i's or uniquely determined by G with this condition this with the condition Stop. Okay, so, you will be able to rearrange this prime power orders so that uh, you can actually write uh, this A m divides A m minus 1 and so on A 2 divides A 1. So, we will actually prove uh, that uh, these two versions are equivalent and then once we are uh, done with that then we will actually focus on the first version and then we try to prove the first version. Okay. But before proving uh, anything, so we need to actually recall some of the uh, basic properties of actually uh, finite abelian groups. Okay. So, then later I will use them uh, in order to prove actually all, all the results. Okay, so, here is the first uh, fact which is which we have actually proved it for any any uh, any group, but anyway in the abelian group this can be simplified uh, further. Okay, so, if you start with uh, two groups let us say 
ஹெச் அண்ட் கே ஆர் டூ ஃபைனைட் அபிலியன் குரூப்ஸ் ஸோ சம் ஆஃப் த சம் ஆஃப் த மாத் ட்ரூ ஈவன் ஃபார் ஜென்ரல் குரூப்ஸ் ஓகே பட் ஸ்டில் பிகாஸ் வி ஆர் டீலிங் வித் ஒன்லி ஃபைனைட் அபிலியன் குரூப்ஸ் ஐ எம் ஒன்லி ஸ்டேட்டிங் இட் ஃபார் ஃபைனைட் அபிலியன் குரூப்ஸ் ஸோ யூ கேன் இமிடியட்லி சி தட் இஃப் ஹெச் அண்ட் கே ஆர் டூ குரூப்ஸ் தென் ஹெச் டைரக்ட் ப்ராடக்ட் கே இஸ் நேச்சுரலி ஐசோ மஃபி டூ கே டைரக்ட் ப்ராடக்ட் ஹெச் ஓகே ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் திஸ் இஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் ட்ரூ ஸோ நாவ் லெட்ஸ் ஸ்டேட் த செகண்ட் ஃபேக்ட் so this is something about general group theory okay if h and k both are subgroups of g again assume assume g is finite abelian group and h and k are subgroups of g then the following are equivalent so what are they the first thing is g is isomorphic to h cross k and then the second thing is g equal to hk and h intersection k must be trivial and of course both h and k being normal is dropped because we are in the abelian group setting the third thing is if you take the order of g then that is exactly the order of hk and which is exactly the order of h times order of k okay so now if you look at uh, the subgroup uh, hk because h and k are normal in g so hk will be a subgroup so then order of hk being order of g will imply that uh, g equal to hk so now order of hk is nothing but order of k r of h times r of k divided by r of h intersection k if that is same as order of h so then uh, you can actually see that r of h intersection k must be actually trivial which is one so that forces that h intersection k is trivial okay so i will leave it to you to check this these these are all equivalent so this is not that hard to actually verify so here is another uh, important fact okay so which is again very easy to verify so this is the fact 3 uh so if you start with again g being a finite abelian group okay as i said some of the statement even true for general abelian group or general group but uh, i'm not worried about that now so let uh, some m is in n so then consider this uh, hm so which is those element of x in g such that order of x divides them okay so this is divides so then hm must be a subgroup of g so what is the proof proof is very simple you start with x and y in hm you can see that r of x divides m and r of y which is same as r of y inverse divides m so now you want to calculate what happens to x y inverse you raise it power m you can see that since x and y both are in abelian group so x power m and y power minus m is going to be identity so that implies that uh, x y inverse power m is identity so that implies order of x y inverse also divides m so that proves x y inverse is inside your hm and hm is a subgroup of subgroup of g okay so for any m you ab- are able to actually get a subgroup which is uh, which is explicitly given in this description those x in g such as order of x divides m so note that if you have a subgroup of order m then that elements of that uh, subgroup actually satisfies this property okay so in the finite abelian group somewhat it's easy to produce lots of subgroups okay so i will uh, stop here and then uh, we will continue with the uh, equivalence of uh, the version 1 and version 2 of the structure theorem in the next class and uh, after that uh, i will prepare slowly how to prove the version 1 okay once you know that they are equivalent uh, then it is enough to prove the version 1 so we will actually try to give like uh, various proofs for example some of the basic uh, results can be 
obtained easily from the silos theorems okay we will also try to directly prove in this situation uh, almost yeah so the whatever that is guaranteed from the silos theorem how it comes for free in the finite abelian setting because abelian setting is somewhat much easier thing to deal with so one should be able to prove everything from the scratch okay so we will try to do that in the next class i will stop here thank you